All right, something that we probably are not going to see much in the future soon, alimony. So when we look at alimony in itself, we are ordered to be considered alimony payments must meet the following requirements. Payment must be in cash and received by the ex-spouse. Okay, that's alimony right there. Uh, it must be made under a decree of divorce or separate maintenance or under a written instrument incident to the divorce. Okay, so we do require to see divorce papers that state that there's alimony. Payments cannot continue after the death of the ex-spouse. Payments cannot be designated as anything other than alimony. Cannot be designated as child support or anything like that. If parties are divorced or legally separated, they must not be members of the same household at the time the payments are made. So you cannot live together if you're doing alimony. Most likely if you've already kind of forced your hand and you're going to get alimony, you probably don't like the person enough to actually still stay in the same household. But legally, you have to be in two households. Now, with alimony, this is the reason why I say that's pretty much going away. Prior to December 31st, 2018, alimony was deductible by the payer and includable in the income of the recipient. Okay. The TCJA eliminated that deduction for alimony. Also, the recipient need not to include alimony received as income. Okay, so we basically have eliminated alimony. But because we still got tax returns that may have it, we are still requiring it to be put on. Okay, but this is pretty much if it was before. December 31st, 2018, that the alimony was basically put in place. Property transfers. Okay. A spouse who does transfer property in a settlement of a marital obligation is not required to recognize any gain as a result of the property's appreciation. Okay. So again, divorce papers, properties being transferred. We're not going to have to worry about it. child support has never been deductible by the payer or income as received. Okay, the, it is an important factor, however, in determining which spouse gets the dependency exemption, which we talked about. Again, the one that's receiving the money for child support will pretty much get the dependency ex exemption, unless it's written somewhere. But the other one gets it. They wave the whites. Child support has never been deductible. Nor income. So again that's mostly because. That child support is supposed to go to the child. And not the, basically the recipient. The person that's doing the tax return. That's always been the idea of why it's not deductible. Okay. Again, the key thing with the alimony is if it has started after December 31st, 2018, it does not show on the tax return. Okay? It's basically just being eliminated as we go. Okay? And that concludes really alimony. Next, we get to have the most fun of this chapter in educational incentives. A lot of information right there. So I'll see you next time for that one.